Okay. Let's move further back. So if I go pull that out, um, looking inside a skull again, we've got this hole over here. This hole over here. That is on the inside of the petrous temporal bone. The inside of the petrous temporal bone. Or maybe it's easier to see this side. Yeah. So this is the this is the inside of the petrous temporal bone. This is the internal acoustic meatus. So internal on the inside, acoustic for hearing, meatus the passageway, the passageway inside. So what we have here is this is the petrous temporal bone. Petrous means rock. So rock is somewhere where you keep things which are safe. Like the northern rock. Well, only until a few years ago. So what do you keep inside there? You keep in there your precious. So what sort of things are precious to you? Your very fine apparatus of hearing. It's all stored within the rock. So in going through there will obviously be the nerves which are going to be associated with hearing. So you've got vestibular cochlea going through. The other nerve you've got going through there is facial nerve. Facial nerve. Now, I don't know for those of you who used to watch television a few years ago, I'm giving away my age here, but you may have seen a television program, Stars in Their Eyes. Okay? Now, what used to happen, Stars in Your Eyes, you used to have this guy called Matthew Kelly. And what happens is you go through a door, there'll be a puff of smoke, and you tell Matthew Kelly exactly what you were going to, who you were going to be, or whose song you were going to sing. You were, get the, you were going to go through this puff of smoke, and then you were going to come out transformed as something else. Well, this is exactly what happens to facial nerve. And I can't think of any more fitting name for the facial nerve to have than, um, than he currently does, because this is exactly what happens to him. He's all face. So he goes in one hole, which is the internal acoustic meatus, ready, looking, all very sort of naive. And then he goes into this petrous temporal bone. When he gets in there, he does a 90-degree bend a 90 degree bend. So he goes in this way, which is horizontal. Can you all see that? In the horizontal direction he's going in. Yeah? So if I turn it round now, let me just flip this round. What you'll see is that when he comes out, he comes out between this foramen, which is between the mastoid process and the styloid process. This is your stylomastoid foramen. Okay? Now you can clearly see this is 90 degree turn. He's come out here at 90 degrees, it's vertical. Whereas when he went in, to spin it around, it's doing this one, horizontal. So there was a 90 degree bend that happens within the rock. At that 90 degree bend, a 90 degree bend we call in anatomy a knee, it's 90 degrees. The word for knee is the genus. So the 90 degree bend, he goes for a ganglion, which is called the geniculate ganglion. And in the geniculate ganglion, what happens is that you get um, a couple of special branches stripped off the facial nerve. So there's a couple of special branches that get stripped off the facial nerve in the geniculate ganglion. One gets thrown out and it comes over, over the top here, which is the lesser petrosal nerve, and it ends up burrowing its way down onto the top of, not through, not through, but the top of Raymond Lacerum, and then it burrows its way through that bone, and it carries on going, and it heads for the pterygopalatine fossa. So if I turn this around, and you can see here, pterygopalatine fossa. So that's where it's heading. That's number one. The second nerve gets stripped off through there and it goes screaming across the eardrum. The eardrum is the tympanic membrane inside, which you would see if you're using an otoscope to look through the external acoustic meatus on the outside. And what you can see when you're looking at the eardrum on a nice clear individual's eardrum is a very tiny thin cord which is screaming across this eardrum, and that is the cord of the drum. 
So what do you call that? The chordae tympani. The chordae tympani. The last nerve with the script of the face while inside the rock is what's called the nerve to stapedius. Now stapedius is the smallest muscle in the whole body. It's associated with the fine ossicles which are within the ear, the inner ear. Okay? Um, well, within the middle ear, within the middle ear. The fine ossicles, stapedius. And then what happens, facial nerve then disappears and comes out through this hole, raging, like a raging bull, which is a stylomastoid foramen, ready now to take on the muscles of facial expression. Facial expression. So he's had a, he's had a change, he has a bit of a makeover, and he comes out ready to take on the muscles of facial expression. Okay, we'll go back in, in here. The last things we're going to talk about are just down here. We've got a big kidney bean shaped, kidney bean shaped foramen, which is your jugular foramen. Now jugular foramen is actually so big and kidney bean shaped because it's made up of the union of quite a few things. You've got the inferior petrosal sinus which runs down here, which we'll explain a little bit later on. But as that runs down, that then forms like a bulb here. And that bulb is the beginning of the internal jugular vein, which is going to then disappear out of the skull. This is the major drainage of the skull. Okay, so this is the sewers. This is why we're calling this part here the slums. This is a sewage system, the veins, after all that dirty blood, ready to leave the head. The other part of the venous drainage is coming from the system here, which is coming from this confluence of sinuses, which joins here, which is basically a meeting point of various sinuses. It goes across here on a transverse sinus, and then comes and does an S-bend, which is a double-bend chicane. Imagine doing a Formula One race. Come around this bend, around the second bend, and then disappear down through that jugular frame. Okay? So there are three things that make that jugular frame so big and kidney shaped. One, inferior petrosal sinus. Two, sigmoid sinus. And three, the beginnings of the internal jugular vein. So if, I, if you can see that there clearly, what I'm going to do is turn that around, and then you can see on the inferior surface, you'll probably be able to see and appreciate there the size of that foramen. Absolutely massive. The only other foramen that's relatively big on the dry skull in that region is foramen lacerum. That's got lacerated, jaggedy edges, and it is not kidney bean shaped, whereas this one quite clearly is. Okay. Now, let's just turn back into the intracranial fossa, and there are just one or two more things to mention. There is one canal which you can see just here. If I poke this in here, it's going to disappear out like that. Can you see that intracranially? Now if I turn round, you'll see where it's coming out on the inferior surface. These two here are the condyles, the condyles. This is coming out behind the condyles, behind, that's posterior to the condyles. This is anterior, that's posterior. So if it's behind the condyles, this is the condyla canal. It's not a foramen again, you can't see the other side, it's a canal, condyla canal, okay? What goes through here are the um, emissary veins again. So this is the rear exit point for pressure for the veins, when the veins build up pressure in the skull. Okay, there is one more I need to mention to you, if I just turn around this way. Now this one is different. Now you saw I've just been in there, which was the condyla canal. But if you go a bit further down, you see this massive big hole. This is the foramen magnum. Magnificent. Massive. Okay. You can't mistake it. You can't miss it. Okay. Um, now, through foramen magnum has to be the biggest 
has to leave the brain. And surely, 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 the, the extension of the brain. The extension of the brain is the spinal cord. So that is the beginnings of the spinal cord heading and leaving the brain. Also coming through there from the spinal cord, heading up the way, from the spinal cord, from the cervical region, is going to be um, is going to be the spinal part of the accessory cranial nerve. Okay. So the cranial nerve 11, accessory nerve, has some spinal contributions as well, which come up through foramen magnum. The other thing which is coming up through foramen magnum is your arterial supply, which is part of your vertebral basal system, which we'll go on to explain shortly. The only other foramen which I need to mention, if we turn onto this side, is probably easier. I mentioned this one is posterior, the condyle canal. If we now go anterior to the condyles, I'm just going to turn this round here so you see, I have another canal here. So that's the condyle there. And there is another canal. That canal is the hypoglossal canal. Hypoglossal canal. And that transmits the 12th cranial nerve. And if we look on this side, it's just in there. 12th cranial nerve. And that is motor to the muscles of the tongue. Hypoglossal nerve. Okay. So I'm now going to show you a view from within the cranial cavity. And just to see that that, that one really doesn't come into play you're actually talking about an intracranial view. So please don't be caught out because the foramen that you see just below, and students make this mistake all the time, that one there is the condylar canal. That's going to come out posterior. Whereas the one which comes out anterior actually leads a bit further down, almost halfway within foramen magnum, to then transmit out, and we'll just spin around again, anterior to the condyle there. Okay. Lastly, on the anterior surface, I just need to mention a few more. Here we've got the lesser palatine foramen. Okay, so this is your palatine bone across here. Lesser palatine foramen transmitting the lesser palatine nerve and artery, which are going to come around this hook of the hamulus, hook of the hamulus, to supply the thing that's flapping off the edge here, which is your soft palate. So your soft palate just sits on the end here, this is your hard palate because it's all bone, and this is your soft palate which you just hang off the end here. That's going to be supplied by your lesser palatine system of arteries and nerves. Then you've got here in front a bigger hole which is your greater palatine, and that's going to come out and that's going to supply your arterial supply to your hard palate, and it's going to disappear up in here which is your incisive foramen. And that's going to go up into the bit which is which does your nose. Okay? So it's heading up there towards your nose. Incisive frame. Down from your nose, coming through that same hole, are nerves, which are going to come and supply your hard palate. Also from the greater palatine frame are nerves, which are going to come and supply the hard palate, and they sort of do a meet in the middle, meet and greet. Okay. I um, think that's going to be the end, really, of our um, talk in terms of the foramen. We'll next move on to talking about the cranial nurse proper. Thank you very much.